Welcome back to Romania, where things have gone seriously weird. Um, walk this way and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, this is our current fixture list. Anybody spot anything weird about it? Yeah. No league games. Um, I've seen this kind of thing happen before, but never in a league that I've actually managed in. But if I go to the rules for the division we got promoted to, and I go to next season, you can see here, it says the start date is the 15th of July, which was over two weeks ago and end date 27th of May but if I go down to the squad registration it's telling me players can be registered between the 19th of June 2029 which is next year so I don't think this league is actually going to run this year and the transfer window dates are fine but the player registration dates are not. So, um, yeah, I mean, this date appears fine, although um, this is at the end of that transfer window. Um, and I think it might be true to say that the rules for this season are also, well, it's difficult to tell because they don't have the same sort of squad registration thing. So, yeah, hard to tell whether that one is, but this was supposed to have started yesterday in-game, and it hasn't. I mean, it, it just isn't there, because if I go to our competitions tab, we're still in that division. That's the league table as you saw it when we last played. So, what does seem to have started is the Romanian Cup. So... I think what's going to happen is I'm going to get a lot of time off this year because uh, whilst I've got these friendlies arranged this is purely to keep the squad um, match sharp and as much of the squad as possible and then we will come back for this cup game but today I will just run you through the transfers we've done I'm not planning on doing any more so I mean, I have literally been killing time for the last couple of weeks in game, and I've got the entirety of August ahead of me, which, and frankly, I don't want to have to sit through all of these. I mean, again, they're all the usual sort of easy opposition that I pick just to get people sharp and used to the tactic. And by gum, if they're not used to the tactic, by the time we play this cup game, then they are seriously deficient in their learning. Um, and as you can see, we won 16 nil. That one disappointing goalless draw, although we did absolutely dominate the game. Um, this you'll notice this 6.2 from a lad called Delis Belaniuk. A little more on him later, but I I was prepared to accept that 6.2 because the evidence of my eyes seeing him, he was getting in a lot of good positions, he was having chances, but it was his first game after we signed him, and he was completely out of match sharpness whatsoever because he was a free agent so he hadn't been playing anywhere or doing anything so I was happy to accept that and then you see his next game scored twice 8.8 .8. so once he was up to a bit more speed he was fine now what we will do is like I said we'll run you through the transfers I will very quickly go through the transfers out because um, let's face it yeah basically didn't know any of these players anyway and you see this is the weird thing this has slipped over to the next season so it knows it's the next season but it just ain't starting it and it's weird weird as and I really hope that that doesn't roll those dates over for the next season and that never starts I mean if that's the case then I will just quit this team and we will have to find a job somewhere else because I'm not sitting around here all day waiting for a few cup games a year quite frankly. Uh, it takes quite a long time to process this league and I'm not sitting through all that. Um, anyway, edging back here. Uh, now, 
Raul Raslog was one of our young goalkeepers. Got 600,000 for him, so that wasn't too bad. Um, Jonas Antoke and Dohotaryu, I don't think either of them are really going to make it, so they're out on loan. And this season, now Cassian Umdahoma is a name you might recognise from last season. He was our starting right back. He was the one who was miffed that we got relegated and wanted to leave. And Goz Tepe got him uh, because he was out of contract at the end of the season and he wasn't going to sign a new one with us. Um, which is a shame because obviously then we got promoted again, although did we? Who knows? Um, and... Yeah, so we lost him, which the fans were really unhappy about. It's like, well, what am I supposed to do? I can't do anything about it. I can't stop him, can I? Um, Andre Veselin, another young goalkeeper that we had hanging around. Oliver Allardings, yet another young goalkeeper we had hanging around. So we've got nearly a million combined for them. Uh, and then this lot here are all just players who are not good enough for the first team, are too old to play in the under-19s and who basically I couldn't really sell because no one wanted them. So they've all gone out on loan. So they're just not cluttering up the training ground, basically. Uh, now, the inns is a little more interesting. Uh, now, Johan Rusu came in. He is, basically, we had a shortage in the under 19s of any of in several positions right back was one of them he was 16 years old he was eligible to play in the under 19s he's never going to be very good but we literally didn't have anyone i don't think so he filled a gap or we desperately needed cover anyway one of the two so he came in there i got a lot of flack for signing someone who's never going to be good enough i know he's not going to be good enough he wasn't signed to be good enough he was signed to be a body and that's at the very least what he is now this one was better. Zilard Gienge, 15,000. He is Romanian. He is our new starting goalkeeper. He is a bit of an upgrade on Mararu. And obviously we've been trying to shed goalkeepers because we had an absolute surfeit of them. At one point the fans did say they were worried that we had too many goalkeepers. And you know that's when you know you've got problems with the fans are saying, well hang on, how many of these people do we need? So, quite rightly, I have been getting rid of a few, but this bloke should be an upgrade um, if he ever gets to play Liga 1 football. Um, <clears throat> now, Adrian Yonitsa, very pleased with this one. Quite the upgrade at left back. He's got generally good physicals, if you ignore his strength. Pretty much everything else is pretty good. Little lack of dribbling, but... Yeah, he is, I think I think he's pretty good for our level. Um, it would be nice to be able to find out though, wouldn't it? Uh, now, on the other side, right back. Um, and yes, he is a right back. Again, solid, lacks a bit of positioning and decision. So mentally a touch negligible, shall we say. And physically not quite the, uh, the player that Yonitsa is on the other side, but Decent. He's Belgian, so he counts as uh, as foreign, but of course EU. And um, yeah, he's looked okay in uh, in pre-season, as you can see. I mean, 7.5 against very poor opposition, few assists. He's doing his bit out there. Now, this lad, Swedish, I believe, is one of our Mazala backups. And we've switched it to Mazala on support because I was worried at, at this level... I need him to be done, really, need I? But I was worried about us being exposed by our Mazars being on attack, so I've dropped them back to support um, so they can fill the midfield a little more than they were. They were sort of obviously pushing forward and basically vacating a lot of space. Um, but, yeah, aside from his long shots and a little bit down on the tackling, he's not too bad, not too shabby, paying him quite a bit on the wages, but... Um, again, he was free, as was Nicolas Nate, who is another Mazala. He will play on the left-hand side, and again, little down on the tackling. decision making's not great. Other than that, generally solid. 
and he's been doing quite well in uh, in the friendlies mainly coming off the bench as you can see three goals and an assist with only one start so decent now Bruno Ventura is a starter he is Portuguese as you can see he is our central midfielder on attack and aside from the fact he can't tackle and I've never been that bothered about the tackling attribute on the central midfielder on attack because I don't want him dropping back there I want him bombing into the area I don't really care if he can tackle that much um, but everything else is pretty solid I think for our our level so I would be excited to see what he could do in that uh, top division I mean as you can see there he's a leading Liga 2 player so hopefully he'll be able to cut it at the bottom end of, of Liga 1 uh, now <laughs> Modelin Stanchu this one I will hold my hand up it was a mistake uh, again I was trying to fill out the under 19s uh, squad so that basically what I wanted to do with the under 19s was I need to start actually arranging some friendlies for them so they can get some game time because otherwise nothing's really going to happen although that said at that age you don't really need game time you need the training but anyway um, yeah the plan was to fill out the squad a bit um, at that level and so I was prepared to just bring in bodies as in the case of the other lad we saw um, what I didn't take into account was that uh, Mudalin Stanchu was born about five weeks too soon to be registered for the under 19s so yeah that's why he has also now gone out on loan because he was actually no use to us and i mean he was never going to be all that good he's not that bad as a goalkeeper and under 19 level would have been fine uh now Kutalin Husa is yet again he's a right back for the under 19s again he's not going to be particularly good he's only 15 but he's a body in that squad and he is eligible which was nice uh, now, Denis Belanyuk, we mentioned earlier, free transfer, Ukrainian, and as an advanced forward, he's got pretty much everything we need. Decent amount of pace, good off the ball, solid everywhere else, and six goals in three friendlies, and an 8.33 average when you consider he got a 6.2 in that first one. That means his last two were pretty darn good. I think he did hit four in the last one, if that's the case, because he hit two in the other one we looked at. So, yeah, loving Dennis's work so far. He's 31, so he's not going to be here forever. But then, at this rate, nor am I. Although, it does feel like I'm kind of stuck in some sort of temporal warp. Um, and then, this little lot, I'm not going to go through them individually. I didn't actually realise three of them were from UTA Arad. Um... But, yeah, again, they're filling out the under-19 squad. There are two goalkeepers and two defensive midfielders in there. Uh, they are all here on loan just to fill out that squad, which I was kind of hoping might actually play some league games this season, but I don't think it's going to happen now. And, um, yeah, that is our transfer business. As you can see, we've brought more money in than we've sent out i'm not quite sure what this season will do to our finances with no gate receipts coming in or any potential tv money from league games or any of that so i mean it is possible we've we're sort of hovering around this sort of just about solvent sort of level uh, as you can see i've got transfer budget left i've got wage budget left um and yeah i I'm just going to go on holiday now until September. And um, the next episode, we'll come back for for the fourth round of the Cup and see see how things go. Um, but I don't see what else I can do, really, and I really just hope it kicks back into gear next season. Um, if it does, obviously, then we'll carry on from there as normal, but... It is what it is so I'm just gonna set this off to holiday for a month and watch a bit of TV while it does it so uh, thank you for joining me here in the Twilight Zone um, 
like comment and subscribe and i will see you next time for what will probably be some cup action unless magically the league suddenly kicks into gear so thank you very much for watching bye bye for now